Hey guys, welcome back to There is Only Free Will. If you remember the origin story of creation, as I laid it out in the previous few lessons, you will remember that in the timeless beginning, before anything began whatsoever, and simultaneous to now, there is only infinite unity, the infinite one, beyond experiencing, the indescribable. Now we'll get further into this experientially, or in a sense you could say non-experientially, in the infinity teaching, or the infinity course. However, for the purpose of this empowerment course, or self-actualization, all you need to know is you just need to have this as a contextual background understanding of where things come from, what is the original unity, what's the original one. So if you remember that originally speaking there is only infinity, and then infinity desired somehow out of all of its infinite possibilities, being completely undefined yet having no awareness of itself, it wanted to generate awareness of itself. It wanted to generate experience and expression of itself. And so it generated free agency, the not energy, but the freedom of free agency itself. This is synonymous with awareness or you. So fundamentally speaking, the awareness that's hearing my voice right now, if you tie it all the way back to its most original state, it actually is complete, complete pure free will. And even now in the form of it listening to me in your very condensed physical experience, it still is free will. So what you fundamentally are is actually free agency. It is free will. It is the infinite one's ultimate free agent. That is what you are. That's what awareness is. Now, <clears throat> why is it important to at least to some extent, be open to or accept the understanding or the principle or the universal law of free will. It is because this is the only way for you to lead yourself fully into empowerment, fully from the victim state into the empowered state, from the sheep-like state into the creator-like state. It is the only way to completely experientially and energetically bridge the gap between you and the creator itself and to once again remember what you truly are and to start to become the embodiment of who and what you truly are. You can't, in my understanding, in my experience with many people of all kinds of spiritual paths, including spiritual paths that absolutely believe that there is no free will whatsoever. In my experience with all of those people, working with all these people and myself, is that there is no sound way, there is no solid, reliable way to completely empower yourself without understanding this principle of free agency, without accepting that that is a fact. You can gain a lot of clarity, you can gain a lot of self-realization, meaning you can start to realize a lot about the changelessness of awareness and the state of oneness, in a sense. But if you still believe in the idea that you do not have or you are not free will or free agency or free awareness, then that will always there will always remain this energetic distancing between yourself and what occurs, between yourself and the Creator, between yourself and consciousness, between yourself and God, between yourself and creation itself, or life itself. I've never met anyone that believed there was no free will and that did not have any energetic distortions that prevented them from fully accessing the truth and the freedom of who they really are. So it is relatively important that you are at least open to exploring and to becoming a, in a sense, believer or rather an experiencer of the fact that you are free will itself. So having shared that, let's get into some of the details. There's many different levels of free will. So, and here's where the confusion comes in with the no free will versus free will conversation. And I'll just briefly get into this because it's such a prominent discussion in these philosophical spiritual realms. So let's just get this out of the way real quick so that we can get to what really matters in your everyday life. So free will or no free will? Absolutely speaking, free will, totally free will. This is my experience. This is my expression, but I'll tell you why. I was one of those believers in no free will for a little while. I was one of those experiencers of no free will for a little while. 
I experienced myself as pure awareness and everything that occurred was simply happening as a, an appearance, as an effortless appearance inside of my awareness. That was my self-realized enlightened experience for quite a while. So I experienced myself as not being the doer, as not being the chooser, as not being free will. It all exper was experienced as everything just happens to me or through me effortlessly and with no doership, with no chooser. This seemed at the time very convincing. It seemed very convincing because I keep reasserting the same point of view, the same definition, unknowing to myself. I was actually generating out of my own free will generating the state of being that experiences no free will. Such paradox, such power there is in free will to generate things that are not actually true, but then make them experientially real. So I started to notice that because I kept repeating the same thing that I heard from many other spiritual teachers and self-realized gurus, that there is no free will, that there is no doership, that there is no chooser, and that things just appear and disappear all by themselves without me being a part of that process whatsoever, just being the observer of it. Just repeating that point of view, because it is a point of view, we have to admit at least that. It is a way of seeing life. There's many people that don't see that way and that also have a valid experience. So at least if we do believe that there is no free will, we have to admit first of all that that is a perception, that that is a perspective, that that is a point of view of existence. It is a lens, a filter through which we see. It's a definition that we have. It's a statement, there is no free will. The statement is followed by a way of seeing life and experiencing and tasting life. So if you keep repeating to yourself, as I did, that there is no doer, there is no free will, then yes, you can gain the clarity and the liberation from feeling caught up inside of the separate sense of being a doer, which is what many people that are not really awakeness or spirituality oriented are usually caught up in is the sense of stressful doership. And hence spirituality or self-realization teaches that there is no doership so that people can eliminate that sense of stress and start to actually relax out of the condensed, contracted sense of self. In this way, the perspective, there is no doer, there is no free will, is helpful for a little while. It is helpful because it relaxes the tension, the identification with the individuated doer. And it allows you to simply rest this awareness very effortlessly and start to see through your defined filters, but start to experience life as simply a show, a fireworks show of appearances coming and going, coming and going. And if you emphasize the fact that they're simply coming and going, then you can get the experience that you're not really doing any of it. It's just sort of happening outside of your control. And this is a very liberating realization for many people because it lets them off the hook. It allows them to simply rest and not have to worry about what happens because they can't change it anyway. However, there is a limitation inherent in this perspective, and that is that it is a perspective and not a universal law or truth. It's not actually the way reality works. So therein lies its limitation. So out of free will, we can choose whatever perspective we wish to continually, continuously repeat. The more often we repeat a certain perspective, the more real it will become to us, the more vivid and real-like it will become for us, the more experiential it will become for us. And so if we keep repeating the statement, I'm not the doer, I'm not the chooser, things are just happening outside of my control, I can't do anything about it anyway, it just happens anyway, life just happens, then we can start to experience life in that way and experience both the benefits and the limitations inherent or innate to that perspective. Now, why does that perspective feel good? If you remember the emotional system that you know, when your perspective is either in or out of alignment with the creator, with creation, with the fundamental laws of existence. If your perspective is close enough that we could call it in alignment with one of those truths, it starts to feel good. If your perspective is out of alignment and does not compute with these laws, it starts to feel bad. So why for many people does it feel good to believe that things just happen and they are not the doer. It's not because the statement, I am not the doer is true. It's because one of the other assumptions that comes with that is true, which is I can relax. Everything is fine the way it is. Everything happens the way it happens. And that is all right. 
So it is in their act of relaxing out of the stressful sense of I need to make things work in a certain way that does not compute with creation. So when they relax out of that, they suddenly feel like they're computing more and more with existence. So it actually starts to feel peaceful and in alignment to believe you're not the doer, that there is no free will because you're not being preoccupied. You're not being overly stressfully oriented upon trying to make things work a certain way, which goes against the energetic flow of creation itself. And in that sense, believing you're a doer in a stressful sense is out of alignment. And but believing you're not a doer, even though it feels better for most people, it still does not feel ultimately perfect. That is because it still is not completely true. It's not in alignment with one of the most fundamental principles of all of creation itself. And that is that of free agency. So what we want is the relaxation that comes with believing that life just happens and it's all good. But we want to combine that with the true understanding of the fact that we actually choose our state of being and our perspectives. And that through choosing our perspectives of life and our state of being, we actually do impact the way things flow through us, the way things just seem to happen. Now we do not use our physical body to make things happen. Yes, we do that to an extent. But what I'm saying is that things, appearances just appear. Yes, they seem to just come and go. Yes, they seem to take care of themselves. In other words, we do not create our reality using our physical body. In fact, our physical body is part of the creation that we have created, part of the environment that we have created. It's inseparable from the rest of our environment that we have created this moment to be out of choosing our state of being previously. So you see, there is always free will. You can choose to believe in a certain belief, and then that can start to seem very, very real the more you repeat it because it becomes experiential. But just because something becomes experiential doesn't make the underlying belief or perspective absolutely true or absolutely in alignment. So free will is honored throughout all layers or levels of consciousness. In other words, consciousness itself is the free agent. Awareness itself is free will. And within its own ultimate free agency, within its own ultimate state of consciousness or awareness, it generates many, many different levels of consciousness, infinite levels, in fact, each with its own purpose, each, each with its own sense of self and sense of individuation of the all that is consciousness. So, each level has its own way of expressing free will, has its own degree of free will, shall we say. So, for example, let's just say that there are two types of consciousnesses within ourselves. There's many, many more, but let's just keep it simple for this analogy and say that there is the lower self or the physical mind, and there is the higher self or the non-physical mind. These, we could say, are two different levels of consciousness that directly apply to our everyday experience. Right now, you're experiencing from both levels. You may not experience fully what it's like to experience from the higher self level, but that's all right. You nevertheless use that level to co-create your everyday life experiences. So there is free will on both levels, but there is a different application of this free will. Hence, the confusion can come in because it may seem like we don't have free will, I cannot just move a mountain or so we believe. Therefore, free will must be an illusion. I cannot create my reality in that way. But we have to understand that from this level of consciousness, the physical mind based here and now based consciousness, we can only do so much in terms of free will. Our free will applies to a different area of relevance, shall I say. So, for example, your lower self or your physical mind's based sense of self that probably that which is feeling like it is right now looking at a computer screen or listening to the audio. That sense of you being right here, being a physical being, or at least a physically focused being, has the free will of choosing how it will respond to life, what perspective it will believe in and what perspective it will not believe in. That is entirely 100% up to you. You can either believe in no free will, you can believe in free will, you can believe in all kinds of things. And you will make these things experiential for yourself the more you actually choose to believe in that perspective. 
So you have complete control whether you remember this or not. But that's why this course is here to help you remember and master this, to master your state of being, to choose consciously. But you have complete conscious control, in fact, over your state of being, over what perspective you wish to adopt in this moment about this moment. How do you wish to respond to this moment using your vibrational attitude, your state of being, your way of seeing yourself in life? That is entirely up to you. Now, what does the creating of your painting, of the life that you perceive, of the environment that you perceive, that is not done from the physical mind-based point of view because that's not relevant for the physical mind-based point of view to have that type of control. So that is in a sense delegated to your higher self consciousness or higher mind consciousness. The higher mind or the non-physical mind's consciousness is what generates experiences. It is what generates the way the wall looks that is in front of you or behind your computer screen or the street that you're walking on right now or the people that you meet. They are all created out of your non-physical mind's energy. So from a physical mind's point of view, you can only give suggestions, you give, can only give hints to your reality. You can only be of a certain vibratory state of being so that you will be most likely to attract certain physical manifestations that then correspond to or reflect that state of being, but you do not seemingly have free will over your environment. Yet you do, but you do from another level of consciousness from that higher non-physical mind's point of view consciousness, which is also you, it's also a part of your I am consciousness. As you'll experience more and more as you proceed through this course and watch my videos, you will, this will become more and more your conscious experiential experience. So you create from different levels, different types of things, depending on what is relevant for that level to have free will over. Nevertheless, there is no absence of free will at any given moment in any creation of your life ever whatsoever. It is all orchestrated by free will. It is all with your overall beings or overall consciousnesses consent. And this is where we get to the nitty gritty practical relevant stuff, which is that every single thing that happened in your life was out of free will. And this is what sometimes trips people up a little bit. This is what makes them angry when I say that or frustrated because how could I have chosen to be perhaps raped in my past? How could I have chosen to create all these starving kids in Africa? How could I have chosen to create all the, or my, my fall last week that didn't allow me to go on my skiing vacation, etc. So we, we, tend to turn this into self-blame and therefore since we don't want to have that experience of self-blame we tend to get angry at the messenger or at the message which in this case is you have chosen every single experience that you've ever had and you will continue to choose every single experience that you'll ever have there will not be a single experience that you'll ever have that will somehow be orchestrated from someone else or some other type of consciousness that is not somehow you you have complete control over your life and what happens to you all the time. Things only happen by free will because that is how infinity has structured all of its existence. It has given it the gift of free will being one of its most fundamental laws. In fact, it's the first creation. The first creation is free awareness, free agency, free will, and all else is founded upon this principle. And so even though your level of consciousness at this stage might be in a sense much lower or much less aware of the overall picture than the highest level of awareness, which we could say is the all that is consciousness. Awareness of everything that exists all at once right here, right now. You're not aware of everything that exists all at once here and now because it's not relevant for your particular individuation's theme to explore. Nevertheless, just know that even though there's different level of levels of consciousness and that from one level of consciousness, it may seem like there is no free will and that some things are simply given to you by something else. Please know that the something else that has given you that experience is also you on another vibratory level of consciousness. In fact, 
most of the things that are given to you, not everything, because some of it comes from your own personal unconscious mind and beliefs. That's why you keep generating a lot of things that don't seem to work for you, that don't seem very pleasant, that don't seem very abundant, that don't seem very beneficial. Nevertheless, they are because that's how you wake up to becoming, once again, a co-creator of beneficial, abundant experiences. However, we could say on a very relative, lower mind's point of view that you generate things that are not in your best interest, even though from a higher point of view they are because they lead you to the higher point of view. But from the lower level, they seem not relevant to you. They seem not pleasant to you. They seem to be not what you desire precisely because you have these unconscious ideas and you don't realize the full extent of your consciousness. But nevertheless, most of the things that are given to you are actually directly given to you by your non-physical higher self's consciousness. So in that sense, everything that happens to you, and here's a statement that I want you to digest and absorb and make yours, even if you have frustration towards it, even if you don't fully believe it yet, but I want you to sit with this. And it's the statement that everything that happens in your experience is a benign in nature or in your best interest and be created out of a level of your very own I am soul consciousness. So nothing happens against your will and everything that happens happens not only by your own free will on some level of your consciousness, but also out of the highest wisdom for what is actually best for you. You cannot fully feel empowered. You cannot fully feel free. You cannot fully feel supported and safe in this universe if you don't understand that this universe is created by you. If you don't understand that everything that is created for you is created for you by you from a very wise level of your consciousness. Again, except for the stumbling moments that are actually caused by our unconsciousness needing to wake up to itself, needing to become more conscious. But other than that, actually everything, and even including that, like I said, from a higher point of view, it is all orchestrated, orchestrated from your very own soul's free will, your own choice by your own consent and in your best interest. It's crucial that you start to, to accept this idea because if you don't, I have sensed it in many, many people, thousands of people, and it will always linger as a sense of feeling betrayed by the universe, feeling at war with the universe, feeling afraid of your own creation, feeling afraid of your own free will. Oh, what will my free will do next? Because that's not how you see it. You see it as, oh, what will God do next? Or what will life have, have in store for me next? I don't know. It might be bad. It might be good. Who knows? It's probably bad because more so than not, bad things seem to happen to everyone. So we need to get rid of those ideas respectfully. So we need to transform them. We really do need to eliminate, illuminate this sense that there is something called not free will. This is not true. It's a universal law that there is only free will. So everything that happens happens by your own consent through your own choice on some level of your consciousness. You need to understand this and start to trust this. If you wish to experience yourself as inseparable from creation, as totally safe, as totally immortal, as totally supported, and eventually even as being the complete creator of your own reality, being the God of your creation, of your universe. And it happens in your best interest because you don't choose experiences from a higher point of view that are not relevant or beneficial to you somehow. Now, how you can improve this is by actually learning the lessons that are given to you, by actually accepting the lessons that are given to you and know that they all come from this higher beneficial point of consciousness. So everything happens by free will. No one can ever experience something that they don't agree vibrationally to experience, whether that vibration comes from their unconscious mind or from their higher conscious mind. Either way, it is still your being this. It's still your creation. It's still your free will. It will simply become more and more conscious. And therefore the flow, the dense of your life will start to become more flow like will start to become more abundant appearance like, even though it's already abundant, but you'll create it to look more abundant, to look more beneficial, to look more love and light filled simply because you become more conscious of the fact that every single second you choose your state of being, your perspectives, and through that, you, with your higher self's mind and what is, what is relevant for you, you co-create your every single circumstance and experience. But most importantly, you choose your state of being. 
You choose the perspective with which you wish to go through life. You choose how you view yourself, how you understand yourself, what you feel about yourself, and how you look at life. That is up to you. That is up to you to clean up, in a sense. Your closet of beliefs is up to you to clean up and get straight and get in alignment with the things that feel good because what feels good is your guidance compass for what is true. And to clean up your closet of beliefs requires you to become aligned in your perspectives with your higher mind's points of view. So, choose only the perspectives that feel good, examine the perspectives that make you not feel good, and ask yourself, why do I believe in that? Is that really true? Does it still serve me to believe in this? Obviously, it doesn't feel good, so it must not be true. And when you feel good about a certain way of seeing, then that must be true. So then fully give yourself permission to accept the fact that your higher mind agrees with your state of being presently, with your perspective. It is in alignment. You stop arguing with your higher minds or your higher self's mind, and you start to become in alignment with it. Live and see as it sees. And this is the beautiful art of empowering yourself into becoming an ever more conscious co-creating principle of infinity. Ever more freedom is regained even though you already owned it, but you didn't know about it and so you gave it away to other portions of your consciousness. But now you can re-embody more and more of your free will and actually start to experience yourself more and more as a living God, as a living co-creating principle. Consciousness. And it's beautiful, there's nothing more profound than to experience yourself so inseparable from the Creator itself that you realize you are the Creator yourself. It's worth it. Explore this idea. So, the homework for this lesson is to sit down for 10 minutes, at least twice before you open your next lesson, and simply contemplate the fact that everything that ever happened to you somehow happened out of free will and out of being beneficial for your overall expansion and growth and for the theme that you chose to explore in this life. Somehow everything happens by benign free will. Go through some of the experiences that you may not agree with, that you may not consciously have wanted to happen that way, and still somehow find the clarity and the understanding and the acceptance and the surrender that those experiences were generated out of your own higher self's consciousness in combination with your own unconscious reactions and mind. Whatever perspectives you adopted in that moment, your higher self will always have to respect your level of free will. So if your free will says something else than your higher self's free will, it will do its best to get through to you. But if you insist upon your beliefs, it cannot reach you. You will not perceive its guidance. You will not perceive its hints and suggestions. You will not start to live in the flow that is possible for you. So loosen up your insistence. Rest in the presence of yourself. Center yourself. Take those two to five seconds to completely give away all thoughts, all insistence, all of your own personally held beliefs. And as you relax into the center of your beingness, into your I am soul consciousness alignment. From that powerful, centered, peaceful, restful space of being, have a look at your life and believe. Start to see how these things are actually created in your best interest. And believe and know and start to download the feeling that these things are happening by your own consent, consent by your own free will only. That's number one. Number two of the homework is to listen to this lesson again until you feel like you got a good grasp on it before you continue with the next lesson. And as always, I could call this number three, but this is a given with every homework exercise. Simply apply what you've learned to everyday experiences, also outside of your meditation sessions if you do these. Just in everyday two to five second moments, take that pause of mind and clearly recognize that this moment is by free will, that you have the freedom to choose your state of being, that you have the freedom to choose through what perspective you wish to respond to your life, to your circumstances at present. Start to embody this more and more. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Enjoy.